this hole is about about the size of my wheel you know what i mean it's about one two about two feet it's about two feet of jump so that's not really um that bad but if i try to do it without momentum it's gonna be a lot harder how's it going guys so today we're going to learn about jumping some reasons you would need to jump your wheel is because of horrible roads or if you feel like you want to jump on the sidewalk because of maybe detour or something like that but my reason for jumping is for things like this this horrible pothole oh my gosh you see that that's a tiny pothole but it's pretty significant still so for reasons like that i think jumping your wheel is very important to jump in general it's not about jumping the wheel per se. The idea is to bring the wheel with you. And the way you do it is by preparing. You have to prep the wheel and prep your mind before you take on um, jumping a wheel. So for example, when I'm riding and I see a pothole, I'm obviously always paying attention. So I'm not ever caught by surprise. Now there are times where I am caught by surprise and I won't be able to jump. I unfortunately have to go right through it. It's better to go right through the pothole and hope for the best than panic at the last second and try to jump your wheel. Because what's gonna happen is you're gonna panic, you're gonna drop the wheel, who knows what's gonna happen. But it's just always good to be prepared. So um, you've probably heard this before, but it's very important to know your environment, to know where you live. So for example, I'm very aware of my neighborhood. And I know for the most part where potholes exist, you know what I mean? Or where they're more likely to exist. So in this case, I know that this pothole is down there. And sometimes it's not just potholes. It could be like elevation in the road or debris in the road, but you need that confidence. And besides confidence, you need speed. So you can jump the wheel, even if you're not riding fast but it helps to jump the wheel if you're riding a lot faster because then you're not lifting the entire weight of the wheel with momentum so with momentum um what happens is uh it allows you to the ability to carry the wheel with very little effort all right so we see it i got some speed the hole is coming up let's jump it and that was so easy that was very easy to do. And again, um, it was all due to momentum. Okay, so the momentum helped me carry the wheel. I, I barely felt the weight of the wheel, to be honest. But I was also prepared. So if this was something that came at the split second and I, and I wanted to jump and in my mind I'm making that decision, jump or not to jump, and then I jump, unless my skills are like, you know, amazing, which they're not right now, I wouldn't jump. You just try to slow down or maybe veer left or right, but um, jumping it wouldn't be a good idea. So let's jump that again. See, I, this time I didn't even try. You don't have to jump real high. Sometimes you just need to get over um, that small gap. So if I look right now, this hole, this hole is about about the size of my wheel you know what i mean it's about one two about two feet it's about two feet of jump so that's not really um that bad but if i try to do it without momentum it's going to be a lot harder so let's let's try to do it without momentum see what happens and i'm going real slow <clears throat> now i still jumped it i did jump it but i felt the weight of the wheel you see so let me see if i can show you <laughs> and that's really bad for the wheel to be honest because the mounts that the wheel is connected to so the wheel has i believe mine has uh six bolts on one side and six bolts on the other side and they have spacers okay and it's connected to plastic the plastic part of the shell now granted all these six bolts allow for a lot of strength a lot of support but he, the more you can uh, prevent a hard fall when you jump um, it's better for your wheel so 
you definitely want that momentum. Let's do it one more time and let's just go find some other bumps. And sometimes I bump just, I jump just because I feel like it. You know what I mean? Oh, that's awesome. Also, foot placement is very important for jumping. Here's another reason you'll jump for dips. So dips in the road, for example. You see this dip in the road? Sometimes, believe it or not, dips are more dangerous than um, than obvious bumps because, or obvious potholes because potholes, you expect them and you can kind of see them from afar. But with dips, they're very difficult sometimes to um, observe because they look like they, let me see if I can show you. So look, I know the, uh, viewpoint of this camera is not as good as my eyes but if you look straight over there you might not be able to see that dip until you get really close to it you know what i mean but if you're someone who's mostly aware of their environment then you can expect to see dips as well and then knowing that you have the ability to jump your wheel with no issues you would just take that on so for example right now i'm just going to take that dip so i see that dip i don't want i, I don't want to reduce my speed so I'm just going to take that dip, you know what I mean? So part of, a re part of the reason you would like to jump also is to not reduce your momentum or your speed. So if I'm riding or I'm racing someone or I'm in traffic uh, or whatever, it's easier for cars to go over bumps than for me. It's even easier for some bikes like motorcycles or whatever. But we have one wheel and we have to make the best of it. So um if you feel like oh i'm in traffic i'm doing 35 40 miles an hour and you you don't feel like slowing down you know because of embarrassment or because you're you're leading the way a good uh thing to do is to jump uh to learn how to jump your wheel in these conditions now another thing about jumping some wheels what happens is if you jump those wheels and let's say for example um the wheel once you jump it it spins right it spins out of control if, especially if you're leaning uh, far into the uh, the wheel, what happens is it'll spin like crazy. And if you're close to the cutoff point, meaning you're doing, let's say you're doing uh, 37, like this wheel is the MSP torque. So let's see, uh, let's say I'm riding this wheel, and I know the top speed of this is 40 miles, 41 miles an hour. Well, a cutoff is at 41 miles an hour. So I'm not gonna ride at 41 miles an hour and try to jump or i'm not even going to ride at 38 miles per hour and try to jump something because i can do that and i have done that but what's going to happen is you're going to increase your chance of a cutout when you land because there's a number of factors you have to take into consideration one for example is your battery level so if your battery level is not up to par but you're good enough just to ride um at a top speed but you're not accelerating hard enough in order to drain too much current from the from the wheel from the battery when you land if your battery is low then you can expect a cutout right but there are many times where i'm on full charge and i'm jumping my wheel and when i land i hear the beeps okay not the beeps on the wheel but on the euc world app because i have it set for 38 miles an hour and 39 miles an hour so um i'll hear the beep go Boop, 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 you know slow down but i'm like wait a minute i'm not even going that fast well that's because when i jumped um the wheel was spinning it's still spinning because i'm leaning forward still so this is something to keep in mind too so um jumping is essential but knowing the pitfalls is even more essential it just makes the riding experience a lot better because now you know you don't have to slow down for um everything and anything um one thing i would like to do is learn how to jump and turn and uh lean toward the sidewalk so for example i can jump straight but what about if i want to jump see that was nice that was another thing too you see a lot of guys do uh they leverage their wheel with something so for example if i want to jump on a sidewalk but it's at the last minute what I'll do is this, I'll touch it and then I'll jump it. You know what I mean? I don't like doing that because that introduces 
um, the possibility of you damaging your rim. Um, because if you do it wrong, you're going to hit your rim real hard. You know what I mean? You definitely don't want something like that. So it's important to like learn how to jump uh, onto the sidewalk and not use the sidewalk for leverage at all. If you're good at that, then you're good at that. I've seen a lot of guys do that, but I can't imagine that it's not damaging the wheel somehow. But yeah, um, what else can I say about jumping? Practice. So you need to practice more and more. So every moment you get, even if there are no like potholes or anything in your way, just jump, you know? Just see how high you can jump at different speeds. So another thing is, um, for example, this wheel, I have the brake and I have the jump. I don't really need anything for, for, for torque because I have my own methods for torque. But a lot of people, you know, they do have the brake and they have some type of pad right here to assist them with acceleration. And on top of that, they have this jump thing right here. Some people, they only have the jump because that's all they need to do. But what I noticed is, um, because I hated pads so much, because I felt saddled in, one thing I noticed is that you kind of need the brake. I noticed that when I jump and I land, I naturally tend to do this. I naturally tend to take my leg and bring it backwards, okay? It's just a natural thing for me because um, I guess I'm, I don't know, I'm re positioning my leg to where it was initially but this right here helps a lot because it helps you not lose any balance while in the air and it helps your continuity from when you jump to when you land so this you can use for braking when you stop this can you can use for stability when you drop i mean it's very helpful not just for braking but it's very helpful for keeping you balanced and keeping you stable another thing is a lot of people uh, like to squeeze their wheels. So um, when I first uh, tried learning how to jump, I noticed I was a little afraid because my legs were loose. So right now, if you look, right here is a little open when I ride. But uh, when I'm jumping, it depends on the situation. But for the most part, I like squeezing the wheel because I feel I have a lot more control um, squeezing the wheel in order to complete a jump. There's no way I'm gonna, well, I wouldn't say no way, but in most cases, I will not attempt to jump the wheel unless number one, my footing is, is proper and I'm squeezing the wheel hard enough so that when I land, everything is kosher, you know what I mean? Because the worst thing that can happen is when you land is for this front part of the wheel not to land straight. Okay, so if it lands at an angle or like this, oh my gosh, you're going down because that's what happened to me the other day. I cleared the uh, the sticks, the wood, the debris that was in the way, but the shoe I was wearing at the time, inside I have Dr. Schultz and I had nylon socks that was very sweaty. So when I landed, not only was I trying to keep the wheel under control, but I was trying to adjust my foot in a way that would be that would make it stable during the landing and i had no time to pay attention to how this wheel was facing the ground and i crashed and it was a brutal crash i didn't like it but it's something that that could have been avoided it's just that i was just starting to learn how to jump so i didn't really consider it much so here's a bump right there and this is a beautiful highway well, a beautiful freeway I like to ride. But every now and then, there's a crazy bump that you might not expect. I don't have my, uh, my app on right now, so I'm literally relying on the wheel <laughs> tilting forward so I can know if I'm pushing it too far or not. I obviously cannot hear the beeps, so I'm not gonna go too fast. But here's the bump, it's coming. Here it is. Oh, that... That was really close, you know why? Because before that, there was a bump, and I didn't jump that bump, but uh, that first bump I went on um, caused me to lose a little bit of balance, and so I ignored that.
and tried to jump that bump and my landing was messed up. Basically what you want is you want a good start so you can have a good ending. Good start so you can have a good ending. Bad start, bad ending. It's just how it goes, you know what I mean? So this was just a short video, but I hope this helped you guys. Um, this wheel is very small compared to something like the Sherman or the EXN. Yeah, that's what it's about, guys. But with time, with enough practice, it becomes second nature. And you do need to do it constantly, as I said before. So yeah, this is exciting, guys. And I hope you go out there and learn how to jump some of your wheels. Make sure your tire pressure is obviously not too high, not too low. I ride at 40 PSI, 38 minimum. Unless I'm doing off-roading, then I'll probably bring it down to like 36, 35 uh, for better traction. But overall, jump, being able to jump your EUC is probably the best feeling ever. But uh, yeah, that's it for now. Go out there and start jumping, guys. See ya. Thanks for watching. Happy riding.